All right, welcome back to the Modern Ham. This week, we're going to tackle another budget build, which is kind of the core foundation and how we got started on this channel. We are going to convert an old ATX power supply from a computer into a power supply for a ham radio. All right, before you go into comments and tell me how bad of an idea this is, I know. This is not the best setup in the world. It's very noisy. It's not optimal. But sometimes you have to do what you have to to get on the air. There might come a time when for some reason all of your equipment blows up and the only thing you have laying around that you can find works might be an ATX power supply. And maybe you'll have to use that. I don't know why you'd be in a circumstance where you don't have a battery but you have a power supply and you have access to AC but it could be dangerous if you don't know much about electronics. There's capacitors in these things and they charge up over time and they'll hold energy when you unplug it. So please, please, please make sure that you are aware that the wires you're touching could be hot even though the device could be unplugged for quite a while. So be careful when you're working with this experiment. So one more safety thing I forgot to add into the video. You should know a little bit about electronics before you attempt this project because if you have to go off the script or you decide to go off the script, you need to know what you're doing. But each of these computer power supplies are not always rated for as much power as your radio needs to output. I'm going to be testing mine on my FT450D and I know after looking at the manual and Googling and measuring myself, it draws about 20 to 25 amperes. So, that means my power supply needs to be able to support 20 to 25 amperes. And a computer power supply often doesn't. Now I've checked the label on this and it says the output is 15 amps max. So what does that mean for me? It means if I connect this power supply to my radio and I put my radio on 100 and I draw that full 20 to 25 amps, it's going to be more than what this thing's rated for. And one of a few things could happen. And oftentimes, they're not something that you want. So you could damage your radio somehow. You could burn up your power supply, short things together, destroy your radio. Uh, but hopefully, these products are designed so that if more current is drawn than what it can handle, there'll be some type of shutoff or a limit. I'm not gonna test that. So what I'm gonna do is just put my radio at about 10 watts out and try to transmit and see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and say, if you guys like this video or if you have any other ideas for power supplies and how we could use them for ham radio or any other parts, please let me know down in the comments. I'd really like to experiment a little bit more and, and kind of play with some ideas. I'm wearing the KN4 MKB Modern Ham shirt. I got uh, the first piece of merch I got from my blog. You can check out the article I've written about this experiment in the description it goes straight to my blog if you want to check that out and if you guys could please subscribe to my videos 90 percent of the viewers aren't subscribed that would be awesome too anyways let's go ahead and get into it all right so the, the big requirements are obviously going to be the atx power supply and a power cable uh, for the power supply so those are the big things that you're going to need here the second thing that you're most definitely going to need is some type of a load and this load is going to need to be about 10 ohms and support roughly 10 watts of power. In my case, I'm using a cement resistor. And as you can see there, it says 10 watts, 10 ohms. And I'll provide a link in the description if you want to buy one of these. And we'll explain what we need it for later. Optionally, if you'd like an indicator for when the, the power is on, you would need a 220 ohm resistor, a basic LED, about 1.7 volts and um, to toggle the power on and off again optionally to toggle the power on and off you might want to switch and that can be very handy as well and you might want to convert this project to something else down the line so uh, this could come in handy so with all these things in mind let's go ahead and get down to what we need to do first the first thing you need to know is what the cables are about so there's two basic types of connector for these ATX power supplies. So the first one being uh, this one right here, which you see is a 10, uh, a 10 pin connector. One that you might also see is a 12 pin connector. Now the things that we want to pay attention to on these connectors, uh, the wires of interest, 
are going to be a green wire and a yellow wire, any of the black wires, the gray wire that in my case it's on here on the pin, the tin pin, and lastly, actually that's it. So we needed the green wire, which there should only be one of, the gray wire, which there should be only one of, all any of the red wires, just one red wire, just one yellow wire, and that should do it. So I'm going to quickly explain to you exactly why we need these and what they do. Let's first talk about why we need the red wire and the resistor. So I've already done this step here because I was using this for another project. But the red wire is plus 5 volts. <clears throat> In order to actually turn these things on, we need to have a load on the power supply. And by running, <clears throat> and by running one red wire which is plus 5 volts, and one of the black wires, which is ground, to a 10 ohm resistor, we can trick the power supply into thinking that it's connected to a motherboard and it has a load. So this right here is what I've done with my load. This right here is the 10 ohm, 10 watt resistor. I do realize it gets a little warm, so what I've done is actually connected it to the back here with a fan. Now this right here is an awful idea. You see these solder points, how they're sticking out? That right there could easily touch the case. It could ground with the case and it could be a bad deal. It could cause a short. So this isn't a good idea. But this whole project really isn't a good idea. But we're doing it anyways. So, you need to connect your resistor to one red wire, one black wire. I've put mine on the fan to keep it cool. But don't do this. Don't do what I do. Once you have that finished, uh, you have done the first part, which is create our load. We've already used a resistor. So the next thing that we want to do that's required, and you can go one or two ways with this, is we need to connect the green wire, which is the power OK, or the green wire, which is power on, to ground. So what does this do? Well, once you connect your green wire and a black wire, it turns the unit on. So we can use this to actually create a switch for the power supply to turn it on and off. So if you don't have a switch, all you need to do is just twist these two guys together, but just know that anytime the power supply is plugged in, that means that the, it's going to be on. So what I'm gonna do really quick, just for demonstration, is I'll just put this switch here in line with the green and the black, and that will effectively create an on-off switch for our power supply. So the power on indicator we will use with the gray wire and one of the grounds. So I'm going to go ahead and snip one of these and snip another one of these and I'm going to push them back through here so we can retrieve them. So now that we have one of the black and one of the gray we're going to want to go ahead and skin those wires as well. Now for this demonstration <clears throat> it's not really very permanent. I'm just going to connect these to a breadboard for my on indicator LED. So I've stripped my gray, and now I'm going to strip one of the grounds. There we go. Now, the cool thing about this pair of wires is they will. This right here would be five volts if the power is okay. Well, what does it mean that the power is okay? That means that one, our green and black are shorted together for the power on, and two, we have a load. Uh, and our load would be that uh, resistor, the cement resistor we put between one of the reds and blacks. So, if those criteria are met, then we get 5 volts on this line. Well, to get light an LED with that, uh, an LED requires around 10 to 30 milliamps, and a 220 ohm resistor will get us about 22 milliamps over the LED. So, if the power is okay, we'll get 22 milliamps over an LED, with a 20, 220 ohm resistor, and we'll, this light will light up. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and stick this in series with the gray to the black, and you'll see exactly what I mean there in just a moment. All right, so after realizing my switch was actually flipped around the wrong way, I fixed the wires there. Now my power supply is plugged in. I have my light. Uh, wired up here so as you can see I have a jumper cable here on the gray wire that goes into the the um, 
220 ohm resistor then it goes through my led and the black jumper cable connects to one of the black which is ground so that means that whenever the power is okay this led will light up our switch is connected with the power on green through the ground maybe not so well all right there we go so it's connected to ground and we have our red and black connected in the back for our load and so whenever i flip this switch that means our power supply should come on and there it is as you can see the led lights up turn it off turn it on again and the fan should start as well so at this point we should be getting a decent voltage out from um, our wires here so like i said for radio we're going to be using the yellow and we're going to be using black and that should give us 12 volts now before we go and connect this to an expensive radio it's probably a good idea to check that just in case so i'm going to go ahead and pull out the multimeter and see what we read on this line all right so it looks like we've got 12.06 volts so that's exactly how much that we need so we know that this is probably safe to connect to our ham radio power supply. So I'm going to start off by saying once again, it's a terrible idea. And you probably shouldn't do this unless you absolutely have to. So what I have going on here is I have this $10 eBay power supply that I have been using that has blown up on me. It doesn't work. So as you can see, even though the, the radio comes in through here and it goes up, but I get no power. So what I've done is I've connected these two uh, little tiny jumper cables, which are not rated for the amount of amps that I'm getting ready to put on them, to the yellow and black wires of my power supply, which we know that is positive 12 volts. So effectively, all I've done is, is I've just left my radio connected to my old power supply that is not plugged in, but I've went ahead and just used those same connectors and attached my my uh, ATX power supply. So right now, obviously the power is off, our LED indicator is off, and our switch is off. Obviously, we get no power. Now, if I go ahead and just turn this thing on, I'm gonna see the LED turn on, and we have enabled power on our ATX power supply, which means we should have 12 volts to our radio. So we'll go ahead and turn it on, and sure enough, there we go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a calling frequency and I'm going to push it a little bit. Don't do this at home. I'm only doing this because I know what to look out for. CQs. CQs. CQ, CQ. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo. CQ, CQ, CQ. So it looks like about 5, five to 10 watts is about all we're going to get out of this guy. And uh, so that's not a whole lot. I'm gonna try it again here. Five watts, we're not really getting out too far. CQs, CQ, C, CQ. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo. So it's pretty rough. It's not doing too well. And that's about what I expected. Now, if you're doing QRP, maybe. Uh, this might work 10% scientific evidence. I can humbly say That the ATX power supply for the ham radio Does not work very well whatsoever could be a lot of RF interference all these cables are laying around too Could be this rinky dink cables could be a lot of factors here coming into that, but uh, at least we've tested it out So thank you for joining me on my first real video back uh, we tried a little experiment today. We tried to use the ATX power supply. By the way, this power supply is from, I think, 2004, 2005. So it's about 15 years old. So we tried to connect a ATX computer power supply up to the ham radio and see how it did. Our results, not too good. We're looking at about 5 to 10 watts output. And that is not really that usable for modern day HF transceivers. There's probably some different things that you could have done than I did to optimize this setup. And if you have any ideas of why it might not have worked, please let me know down in the comments. If you think that uh, there's something better I could have done, uh, please let me know in the comments. Or if you have any other ideas for power supplies that you would like to see in the future improvised to radio power supplies, 
let me know down below too. Link to this write-up for this experiment is on my blog as well. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next week. Uh, we should be seeing live streams in about a month. I've got some better gear coming and it's on the way. Thank you very much for watching and 73.